Hi everyone, it's Peter from PS Sound and in this short walk around video we are going to check what we've managed to do on this SL63 AMG 2016 model and let me tell you this this car is not easy to work on but the outcome yeah it's quite quite stunning all right let's start at the back this is our first convertible and just as I expected, it's not that simple, uh, especially as it's a hard top. And that doesn't really leave a lot of room for anything. We knew that we would have to have a subwoofer in the car and we would have to hide amplifiers somewhere too. So the only space was down there uh, below the fourth floor that we created this way. There's still a bit of practical well, that's that's a funny word in this in this case with this car, practical space because there's not much, as you could see that cover uh, that has to be pulled back in order to uh, let the roof come down. Uh, that cover makes sure that you don't load anything higher, anything bigger, otherwise you would hit the the glass, which is the rear glass, <clears throat> and um, down there I will have to insert a picture in. We built a custom enclosure, um, played it around the battery, and we managed to fit in a Focal 10WM, a Utopia 10-inch subwoofer in 22 liter, which is like roughly 0.8 cubic foot sealed enclosure. <clears throat> and that's a beautiful musical driver running off the Helix P2. P2 has two times 280 watts, and we run each uh, channel to each voice call of the sub. So we have 560 watts altogether for the sub, which is more than enough headroom for a 400 watt RMS sub. And it has really nice output. We were really worried that the base wouldn't transfer into the cabin. And when the roof is on, actually there's a really nice transfer function from the back into the cabin. And there's a very, very nice feel of base. You really feel it. It's a short cabin. The sub is pretty close to the listener. And there's not much that's rattling. We did minimal treatment, especially as the tailgate is made out of carbon. So we did not want to interfere with anything there. Plus the whole mechanism is probably pretty sensitive to additional weight. And if somebody wanted to deaden that whole tailgate, um, you, would, you would add a fair amount of weight, even if you use really thin deadening. But honestly, nothing flexes on that. It's not like sheet metal, it's really rigid. The only thing that really buzzes on this car is just those additional plastic little things where the lights are. Uh, even the registration plate doesn't, doesn't buzz and doesn't do much noise. Yes, there is a bit of noise outside when the car <clears throat> is rolling, but inside you don't hear much other than the parcel shelf, which is that piece. Um, that rattles a little bit, but I think with the convertible, you just have to understand that you will have sacrifices. But Having said that, um, I was quite amazed by the actual transfer function and the output that we got in the cabin with the roof on. Having the roof down, like now, as I'm walking around the car, that's a different story. Once you have the roof straight into the trunk and then you lose the, the cabin, then um, yeah, you lose a lot of output from the sub. You still have some additional um, low end. So if you mute the sub, you can definitely tell that you, you miss something. And if you add the sub back, it gives a bit more punch. But uh, fortunately, the front end is very capable. And we will talk about that in a second. But what I didn't mention that we have the Helix V8 and that runs uh, the freeway front end fully active. So every single speaker has independent amplifier channel as well as the rear feel. This way we can control every single driver and we can set it up with an RTA and we can optimize all the drivers and do our PS sound magic to make this system sound very, very neat and very nice. So let me pull this back because without that, without putting this one back, without locking it here, which uh, has a sensor, the target wouldn't come down. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the way now. For the for the base to get get to the front, and um, there's not much more room, not much more room. We managed to technically get the best we could. Uh, not much else you can do. 
First, actually, the plan was to have a plug-and-play upgrade because most Mercedes has the same speaker mounting, same speaker sizes from like 2014 onwards from the S-Class. Then the C-Class came out with the same mounting and then E-Class onwards from 2016. This is a 2016 model. I think this car was made uh, earlier, designed a few years before that. And this SL has the same scenario with some of the drivers like the S-Class. And you would think it's plug and play, but it's not quite. Um, well, at least in the S-Class, the, on the W222 range, you still have the ability to swap the speakers to plug and play options. Uh, not in this one. Yes, it has a 4-inch driver in that location in the door, but the drivers are slightly larger and the mounting points are different than the plug-and-play upgrades. So our plan to have a simple upgrade that was through the window right at the beginning when we took the door cards off. And also that tweaked tweeter location there is far from optimal. We had a look at it from the back. And not just that you cannot put the factory upgrade options from... There are so many options. Yes, we use a fair amount of stag, which are great, great drivers for the money, but you know, Focal, Ground Zero, AudioTech Fisher, oh, so many, so many brands have plug and play options for these cars. And um, that would not fit in this one. So you would have to do a bit of butchering, what we did not want to do. And then the owner was also like, Pete, you know what, if this is the situation, then let's go a bit further beyond a simple upgrade um, and do something really nice. This is this is a car uh, that he got for himself to treat himself so to be fair this car deserves a proper system. So when we saw that factory upgrade wouldn't work, a plug and play upgrade would not work, then we decided to use the good old, it's getting a bit boring right guys, you, you've seen it in a few, few cars now, uh, we have the Stag MSS3, uh, we made custom 3D printed fully uh, filled ABS rings for the mids and bolted them in. We fitted rib nuts in the door card. In this way they are definitely solid in place because the factory mounting is just little rubber bungs and then you have to push the, uh, the speakers into those rubber pieces which is not quite rigid although yes it isolates but there's there's better way to do it. And then the tweeter was a good question because there was no sail panel in this car. Some of you, if you don't know this car, then yes, those sail panels now that you see were fully custom made from nothing. Um, we decided to go with the sail panels because I have to show you the A-pillars. <coughs> so the A-pillar is not a, a simple one. It goes, let's do wide angle. It goes all the way to here. So that's one single piece all the way down. Uh, and it's also trimmed with vinyl, uh, being convertible. It has to be, you know, something more than just headliner in case you have rain coming and then you can't pull the, the roof back. Um, and we did not really feel like we wanted to interfere with anything on this A-pillar and modify anything. So we kept it factory and then we came up with the idea to do sail panels. Yes, we had to get extra cable into the door. That was at least easier than other cars because this car doesn't have a plug. This has a rubber boot and then you could shove the cable through. It wasn't simple, but it was simpler. And then, yes, we had to do a bit of modification because we had to mount that uh, sail panel that we made and had to let the cable go into it. So we used a big chunky M12 bolt with a hole in the middle of it. So that way the bolt can fix the pod in place with the nut underneath the door card. And then in the middle of it, we can run the speaker cable through. This way, it's a nice and neat option. Yes, if the car has to be turned back to factory, then we will need a cover there where we drill the hole. Or to be fair, this car should go with the system as is. I'm sure the the owner in the future would really appreciate it but at this stage it's not on the radar that this car would be sold so I'm just mentioning because many people worry about doing any modification to any panel and then putting it back to factory state but that was a small enough 
little hole that can be covered and it can be neat in the in the future source so we integrated the factory head unit just on speaker level um, at least this is the older platform and we get pretty clean signal out of it we had to sum the the base and the uh, mid high level and it's very clean playing cd sounds great honestly it sounds really good um, quite surprised usually we don't get clean signal out of the factory head units on this one in this case it worked pretty well uh, although it's quite funny that this car originally came with only four channel amplification there were two channels for the base drivers in the firewall like in the latest mercedes uh, we have a pair of 8 inch drivers in the firewall one on passenger side behind the footrest and then one here in front of the accelerator pedal these drivers are, are quite specific just like in the s-class they are not you know there's no option to upgrade them with a plug-and-play um, driver plug-and-play upgrade driver and doing the extra work to to change it just to any anything else is is really not worth it because that driver is actually great I know many people would rip factory speakers out straight away but in this case that driver is very specific designed for that application on the in the firewall and it's an 8-inch driver so you have two 8s up front mounted super rigidly and that's the magic in these Mercedes cars even with that now that we have clean power on it from the Helix V8 and it has plenty of dynamic range they do a better job when it comes to impact kick from the front without any buzz and rattle than 90% of the aftermarket systems where they just fit a super expensive speaker in the door they may make a beautiful trim where the factory location is in the door and then some people put you know shops put led lights around them and all the fancy things and they will sound rubbish in comparison even to to this factory driver now after it's been tuned uh, i'm happy to to put it against many many cars there's so much impact up from from this car that actually some people would think we have a front sub and we don't just like in, in my S-Class the first year when I got that car, I kept the Burmeister 8-inch drivers and then I just put a DSP amplifier behind it, tuned it, and people didn't, didn't want to believe what we, what we had. Some people were pranked actually, and um, Eddie, my guy, he, he came up with the joke that we had Acoustic Elegance 10-inch prototypes in, these, um, in the S-Class. And people believed it because the impact was so impressive that people are not used to that. And... Yes, lesson learned. Location, the location matters hell of a lot. You get a lot of loading because the driver is so far. And then it's also mounted super rigidly on the firewall, the strongest part of the car. So you get so much clean energy coming out of that speaker that actually that driver is almost as far from you as the sub at the back. There's only like an eight inch uh, distance difference between, between the two. So even without any tuning, Actually, when the drivers were uh, with the right polarity, even without tuning, they were summing up so well, so, so well. So, mid-bass stays the same. Uh, as I mentioned, we have the MSS3 for mid and the MSS1M, the latest magnesium tweeters. Now, we had these in the BMW 3 Series as well. Some of you have seen that build shared not long time ago. And in that one, we had these same tweeters, but not with the same faceplate. These tweeters can come with two faceplates. They can twist off, and then you can choose whether you use the small faceplate, then it makes it way, way smaller, way more install friendly, or you can use this fancy one. In this instance, it made sense. It just made sense to use those. They, they look prettier, they blend in. Come on, focus. Uh, they blend in, and it's just the right size for that sail panel is the right proportion to to the rest of the trim pieces and, and things in the car. So other than the factory source, as I mentioned, we have that on speaker level. So the owner can still use CD, can use radio and phone calls. We also have a hack HD Bluetooth module, uh, an APTX module in the DSP, so he can stream directly from his player 
um, to the DSP bypassing this and then he can control the volume from the player or we also fitted a uh, there you go how do I open it now I don't know how to open this section now that's 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 funny because I opened it like 10 times today there you go now it does so we fitted a conductor there from helix and with that one you can you can run everything you can control volume sub level rear field level you can change presets and you also have tone control and with the tone control you can adjust the the bass and the treble uh, to your liking you can even choose the frequency where you want to apply the tone control uh, as a shell filter at the bottom end and a shell filter on the top end so it's a really handy piece of small controller because that can be easily hidden running the cable there wasn't fun but there's literally no other place in this car where you could mount it neatly usually we make a bracket and then we shove it up between panels but there's not even a gap between the panels here anywhere at an accessible place so that was the only option and most of the times you don't really need to control much you may turn the rear field level up and down a bit um, we have two presets where the rear field plays normally plays full signal and we have uh, also a preset where the rear field plays as a differential rear field so no mono signal comes out of it it only plays anything that was recorded in stereo and it sounds a bit more like an effect speaker like a surround speaker giving more room information uh, creating more ambience and it creates a wider stage however yeah in this car stage width is not an issue the stage is insanely insanely wide if we want to go deep, because that's what this channel is about, I know some people, if they stumble upon our videos and our channel, then they may realize that, geez, you know, Peter can talk a lot. And some people run away, and I know many people just skip the video because it's, it's too deep. I talk a lot about the technical parts of systems. And, um, yeah, we, we could now talk about the aiming, because people always ask, you know, Peter, why did you choose this aiming for the tweeters? And... In this instance, we kept the tweeters um, on an angle where both the driver and the passenger gets somewhat similar aiming. So the tweeters are within 20 degree for me, for the driver on both sides, as well as for the passenger. If you sit on the other side, you get very similar aiming that really maintains a great high, uh, high frequency extension on both sides. Yes, this car is tuned to the driver and many people worry that if it's a single seat tune then it, it must sound terrible on passenger side i have no idea why why people are, are so crazy about a two seat tune these days and i don't don't know why they think that uh, a single seat tune would sound so bad on the passenger side it can if the speaker aiming is not optimal but if you if you are a bit careful especially the tweeter aiming you can you can have great spectral balance even on passenger side even if it's tuned to the driver. Just because we optimize the response from the drivers, from the speakers to the driver side. So, for instance, if these speakers are closer to you, you will hear them louder. Uh, you will get more level coming out of them than the passenger side, which is further away. Then you can adjust the levels. You can um, balance out the response from the drivers. And, and we do extensive equalization with the, with the EQs, uh, fully parametric EQs. And then also because these speakers are closer to you, then you can set the time alignment that the speakers will get to you uh, at the same time from both sides. As well as, of course, you have to align the pairs of speakers. The bass speakers are way further away from you. So you get the signal out of the tweeter and the mid earlier. So you will have to delay these in relation to the mid bass. Yes, time alignment is a tricky thing. Many people struggle with, many shops struggle with. But once you nail it, then the whole system comes together. And instead of having many speakers, just making a mess and, and playing, you know, all sorts of frequencies and then being harsh and whatnot, once you tune a system properly, it's a whole different story. The speakers disappear physically. You don't focus on the speaker locations anymore. You just have everything presented in front of you. And if something was recorded in mono, it should appear right in the center of the sound stage which is right in the middle of far left and far right roughly there because that's another thing i mentioned it in a few videos that many people want to have center image in front of them you could only have center image in front of you in a correctly tuned system if the driver side speakers were 
at the same angle from you you know like that's now super wide from the middle like 45 50 degree then this side would have to be the same way probably there but you don't have speakers there you have them there they are in a way smaller angle probably like 20 degree that's why if you set up a system correctly then the center image is not going to appear in front of you it has to appear right in the middle of the two you can reach out with your hands and create oh the camera is not wide enough and then see where the middle is going to fall when when the time alignment is correct it's going to be roughly in the middle not necessarily in the middle of the car because some in some cars it can be here in some cars it can be there it's really uh dependent on the speaker location in some cars you know you have the mids and the, and the tweeters further in closer on this side so it's almost like it's, it's straight in front of you then of course the stage may shift more towards the passenger side it really really depends always depends on the speaker locations but yeah even in this car even when the roof is down we have amazing staging and holographic imaging everything feels like it's in front of you at eye level yes the mid-range location is a bit compromised it's a bit low but it's still all right your knee doesn't block it and then the tweeters play quite a wide range they play lower and then that that way we get plenty of information from up high Jeez, now i talked a lot i talked a lot also if you really want to learn if you want to see what goes into these systems what challenges we find how we run the cables uh, how we took things apart and and how this whole thing came together not to mention that we also have rt evaluation of, of a project like this then check out description in description we have a link to our patreon channel where we share a lot of behind the scene content we, we we share all these projects we have daily updates we have the rta videos you can see what response we get out of each speaker then if you have something similar you will understand what drivers you need what size drivers you need what range the the speakers have to play um and then of course we have weekly topics so much valuable content now on patreon after more than three years it's been running that it's it's insane once you join you will struggle to catch up and it will probably take you several months if not half a year to catch up with all the content but by the end you you watched everything you will definitely have a better understanding of all this madness that we do in this sound quality sound quality field building beautiful sounding cars all right i'm gonna leave it here i talked hell of a lot I'm going to record a couple of videos just walking around playing music just for inspiration for you guys. Never take it as a reference. I always say it. Don't take it as a reference. Yes, I make sure that I use a good microphone. I've been oral microphone to record cars um, to give you a, the most realistic chance of hearing these cars through a recording, but it's still a recording. I always tell everybody, if you want to have an idea about these systems, you can come to meetings. We have regular meetings in Brighton. Uh, we have one coming up on the 2nd of March. I mentioned it in the previous video as well. You can go on our Facebook page. On the Facebook page, uh, there's a featured uh, part up, up on the top of the page where you see events um, and you see the latest events right there on the top. You can see all the details where you need to come to Brighton Marina, how you can find us. We will be there from 9 a.m till um, 5 30 in the afternoon and then six o'clock some of us go out to have dinner together it's a really nice friendly vibe you can hear many cars that we built and many other people di wires uh, some people with systems built by other shops come around and we always have a good 10 15 cars 25 30 people at least in average sometimes even more and then you have a chance to to listen to these cars that's the only way to get an idea about how systems work how speakers work and that's way more valuable than just looking at pictures and videos you know i i know some people don't have any chance for that but sometimes you know it's worth even if you live in the somewhere in europe if you are within like two hours hop on a plane come over have a long weekend i can help organize it where to stay we had people coming from uh lithuania um, sometime last year yeah we had several people coming from Lithuania and um, we had a great time the guys checked all the cars and and they they didn't regret coming over 
and then that gave them a lot of inspiration for their own projects. I'm going to finish it here. Feel free to share it. Share it, comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed, then you, you can see many other videos on the channel coming up. And um, as soon as we, we finish the next project, which, oh yeah, we have a crazy one in the background, I don't know. If you can see it, there you go. There's Taycan. The Taycan is back that we shared uh, not long time ago. And that car is now going beyond human levels. That, that's just going to be insane. That's now like the the end goal, end goal system. Well, it's already a great system in it, but we are tweaking it to absolute crazy, crazy level. But you will see. You will see that coming soon. Or go on Patreon and then you can see daily updates and then you can see what, what's happening with that car. All right, I'm going to finish it here, and I will see you soon. Take care.